Hey everyone, recent updates I'm seeing in the AI world make me think that someday, tools like Photoshop will lose their grip. So the makers of Flux Models recently released their newest image editing model called Flux One Context Dev. It can accomplish tasks in minutes that would take hours in Photoshop. So let's explore how we can use this new image editing model with Comfy UI. The download links I'm using here are in the description. So let's get started. First, let's see where we can download the full model of Flux.1 Context Dev. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go, this is a gated model, so you'll need to create an account on Hugging Face. Don't worry, it's free. After that, you'll need to agree to the terms of Black Forest Labs. Once that's done to download the model, go to Files and Versions. Scroll down to find the full model, which is named Flux One Context Dev Safatensors. Use the download button to get this model. And if your computer cannot run this model, then you can check out the FP8 model. Let me show you. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go. The FP8 model is just around 12 GB. If your computer can run this model, then use it. Use the download button to download the model. And in case you cannot run this model, then you can download other quantized models, which come as GGuf files. Let me show you. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we can see a lot of quantized models. The smallest one is Q2 and the highest is Q8. I suggest trying different quantized models and seeing what's best for you. Just remember, different quantized models will produce different results. Next, we need text encoders. If you've already used Flux models before, you might have these. If not, let's see where we can download them. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go. From here, we need to download two files, Clip LSAFA tensors and T5XXL. Here we have three T5XXL files. If your computer can run the FP16 model of T5XXL, then download that. If not, use the FP8 version. I will be using the FP8 scaled model, which is slightly better than the normal FP8 model. Use the download buttons to get these models. Next, we need to download the VAE file. Just like before, if you're already using Flux models, you might have this VAE file and you can use that one. If you don't have it, let's see where we can download it. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go, go to Files and Versions, then scroll down and look for AE.SAFATensors. Here it is, use the download button to download it after downloading all the files. Let's see where we need to put them in Comfy UI. Open the Downloads folder. Here I have three versions of Flux.1 Context, the full model, the FP8 model, and another quantized model in GGuf format. Let's select all three of them and cut them. Next, open the Comfy UI Models folder. Inside that, find and open the folder called Diffusion underscore Models, then paste the files here. Now let's go back to the Downloads folder. Let's select and cut the text encoders. Again, open the Comfy UI Models folder, find and open the folder called Text Encoders and paste the files there. Then let's go back to the Downloads folder. We'll select and cut the VAE file. Once more, open the Models folder of Comfy UI, find the folder called VAE, open it and paste the file. After that, launch Comfy UI. I've already done that. So let's move on to the Comfy UI interface. We'll refresh Comfy UI by pressing R on the keyboard. Let's start building the workflow for using Flux One Context. Double click an empty area and search for Load Diffusion Model, click on it. In the Unet name, select the Flux One Context model you want to use. If you are using the full model, select that one. If you are using the FP8 model, then select that. However, if you're using GGuf models, you'll need to use the node called Unet Loader instead of Load Diffusion Model. And of course, Unet Loader comes with a custom node pack called Comfy UI GGuf. Make sure you have installed that custom node pack in Comfy UI. Right now, I will be using the FP8 model, so let's select FP8. Next, let's add a node for loading text encoders. Double click and search for dual clip loader, click on it. Let's move it over here. In clip name 1, select clip L.SAFATensors. In clip name 2, select the T5XXL FP8 scaled model, or if you're using the FP16 model, then select that one. Then change the type from SDXL to flux. Next, let's add a node for loading the VAE. Double click and search for load VAE. Click on it. Let's move it over here. In VAE name, select AE.SAFATensors. Then click and drag from the clip output of dual clip loader and select clip text encode. Let's rename this node to positive prompt. Next, let's add another node called K Sampler. Double click and search for K Sampler, then click on it. After that, let's add another node called Model Sampling Flux. Double click and search for Model Sampling Flux, then click on it. Then connect the model output of Load Diffusion Model to the model input of Model Sampling Flux. Finally, connect the model output of Model Sampling Flux to the model input of K Sampler. Next, let's add a node for loading images. Double click an empty area and search for Load Image from Outputs. Click on it. This node is really helpful. For example, if you want to do multi-round editing, this node will help you load the current output image for further editing. Next, let's add a node called Flux Context Image Scale. Double click and search for Flux Context Image Scale, then click on it. Then connect the image output of the load image node to the image input of Flux Context Image Scale. So why do we need this node? 
This node will change the resolution of your input image to a suitable resolution that Flux One Context can work on. Then double click and search for VAE encode. Let's move it over here. Then connect the image output of the Flux Context Image Scale node to the pixel's input of VAE encode. After that, connect the VAE output of the load VAE node to the VAE input of the VAE encode node. Next, double click and search for reference latent, click on it, then connect the latent output of VAE encode to the latent input of reference latent. After that, connect the conditioning output of reference latent to the positive input of K sampler. Following that, double click an empty area and search for flux guidance, click on it, then connect the conditioning output of positive prompt to the conditioning input of flux guidance. After that, connect the conditioning output of flux guidance to the conditioning input of reference latent. Then let's change the guidance value to 2.5. Then double click and search for conditioning zero out. Click on it. Then connect the conditioning output of positive prompt to the conditioning input of conditioning zero out. Then connect the conditioning output of conditioning zero out to the negative input of K sampler. Next, double click and search for empty SD3 latent image. Then connect the latent output of empty SD3 latent image to the latent image input of K sampler. In this node, we can decide the resolution of the output image. For example, you can set it to match the resolution of the image you provided to the Flux 1 context. Let's see how we can do that. Double click and search for Get Image Size, click on it, then connect the image output of Flux Context Image Scale to the image input of Get Image Size, then connect the width output of Get Image Size to the width input of Empty SD3 Latent Image. Just like that, connect the height output to the height input of Empty SD3 Latent Image. And also, connect the width output of get image size to the width input of model sampling flux. Also, connect the height output to the height input of model sampling flux. Next, let's move on to the K sampler node. For its settings, I will be using 20 steps, a CFG value of 1.0, Euler as the sampler name, and simple for the scheduler. Now, let's add another node called VAE decode. Double click and search for VAE decode, then click on it. Connect the latent output of K sampler to the sample's input of VAE decode. Then, connect the VAE output of the load VAE node to the VAE input of VAE decode. Finally, add a save image node by clicking and dragging from the image output of VAE decode. We've now built our basic workflow for Flux.1 context. So let's start editing some images. All right, let's move on to the load image from outputs node. Click on the button labeled choose file to upload. We're going to select this old photo that really needs some fixing. Now hit open. Now since that preview is a bit small, let's quickly open this image in a new tab for a better view. Wow, take a look at all the issues here. Significant scratches, folds. It's quite a challenge. Let's see if Flux One Context can restore this image. So I've created a prompt for fixing this image. First, let's copy that and paste it into the positive prompt. If you look at this prompt, it's pretty clear what I want to do with the input image. When you're writing your own prompts, always be clear about what needs to be done to the input image. Here I'm saying, remove the scratches and creases, remove the folds in the photo, then colorize the image, make it look like it is taken from today camera. Now, let's run this workflow and see what happens. And there we have it, the generation is complete. Let's pop open this generated image in a new tab for a better look. As you can clearly see, the model did an excellent job. While there are a few minor imperfections overall, it looks incredibly good, especially when compared to the original photo. We could certainly try running the workflow again to see if we get different results, but I'm quite happy with this one. So let's move on and edit another image. Let's choose this photo, click open, and then let's quickly open this image in a new tab for a better view. So what's the plan for this image? We're going to edit the text within it. Specifically, we'll replace the word greatness with goodness. Let's see how we can do that. Let's move to the positive prompt, type replace, then put the text greatness inside double or single quotes. After that, type with and then put the word goodness inside quotes. Since I want capital letters, I'll use those here, but you can type smaller letters if you prefer. Finally, type in this image. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go again, the generation has finished. Let's open this generated image in a new tab. As you can see, the model successfully replaced greatness with goodness and the font style and color remain the same. This was all done by the FP8 model of Flux 1 context, and that's pretty amazing. However, there's one problem, the image is cropped. This happens because we're using the Flux Context Image Scale node to avoid this cropping. I think we can change the initial image resolution to something like 1024 by 1024 with padding added. For now though, I'm fine with this result. Let's move on. What if we want to remove all the text from the image? Let's see how we can do that. Go back to the positive prompt, then type, remove all the text from the image. Now let's run the workflow to see if it works. Here we go again, the generation has finished. 
Let's open this generated image in a new tab. As you can see, the model successfully removed all the text from the image. We can remove more than just text, though unwanted objects can be removed too. Let's see how we can do that. I'll open another image. Let's select this photo. Our goal here is to remove the red scooter from the image. So in the positive prompt type, remove the red scooter from the image. Using clear identification marks like that makes it much easier for the model to understand and perform the action. After that, let's run the workflow to see the result. Here's the result. Let's open this image in a new tab. Fantastic. The model not only removed the scooter, but also its shadow from the image. That's really impressive. We see some minor texture issues around the walls, but overall, it's a solid outcome. And what about removing watermarks from an image? Let's select an image with a lot of watermarks and let's open it in a new tab. As you can see, there are many watermarks in this image. Let's see if Flux One Context can remove them. So go back to the positive prompt and type remove all watermarks and text from the image. After that, let's run the workflow to see the result. Here is our result. Let's open this image in a new tab. As you can see, the result is pretty impressive. There are still some minor issues, but overall it's a good outcome. Now let's see if we can use this model to transform images into the Ghibli art style. So let's open another image. We'll select this image of a lady, click open. To transform this image into Ghibli art, type transform this image into Ghibli art style, then run the workflow. Here it is, let's open this image in a new tab. Just like before, Flux One Context has done a good job as always, I'm pretty impressed. Now let's edit another image, I'm going to select this train photo, click open, let's open this image in a new tab, so guys, what about changing the season of this photo? Let's try, go back to the positive prompt, then type change the scene of this image to winter season, then let's run the workflow. Here we go, the generation has finished. Let's open this image in a new tab. As you can see, Flux One Context did a pretty good job. Now let's see how we can combine different faces to create new images. First, we'll add another load image from Outputs node. Double click and search for load image from Outputs, then click on it. Next, let's select a face. We'll choose the Tom Cruise photo and click open. In the other load image node, let's select another face. I'm going to use this lady's face and click open. Finally, let's mute our K sampler. Okay. Next, double click an empty area and search for the image stitch node. After that, connect the Tom Cruise photo to the image one input of the image stitch node and connect the lady's face to its image two input. Then add a preview node to see how the image output of image stitch looks. Click the run button. As you can see, the image stitch node combined both faces into one image. But that's not enough. We need to adjust the scale of Tom Cruise's face to ensure both faces have better relative scaling in the generated image. So let's add a node called resize and pad image. Then connect the Tom Cruise photo to the image input of resize and pad image. After that, connect the image output of resize and pad image to the image one input of image stitch. Now let's change the target height from 512 to 1024. Then click the run button to see how it looks. Well, now it's so much better. Let's downscale Tom Cruise even further. We'll change the target width to 420. And then let's see how it looks by pressing the run button. Here we go, it looks so much better than before. After that, let's connect the image output of the image stitch node to the image input of flux context image scale. Then we'll connect the output of flux context image scale to the image input of the preview image node to see what the output of flux context image scale looks like. Here we go. Now let's unmute the K sampler, then go back to the prompt. Let's type a man and a woman standing next to each other. The man is wearing a suit and the woman is wearing a Supergirl suit background city. This is a simple prompt, but we can create different kinds of photos from these faces, okay? So let's run the workflow. Here we go, the generation has finished. Let's open this image in a new tab. As you can see, the result is pretty impressive. Now, what if we wanna edit this image further? Let's see, if we wanna use the generated image for editing, then click the refresh button of any load image from outputs node. It will load the last generated image. Then we can connect the image output of the load image from outputs node to the image input of flux context image scale. After that, we can simply use the prompt to edit the image further. Moving on, we now have a new group node inside Comfy UI. Let's see how we can use that group node. So let's create a new workflow by clicking on this plus button. After that, let's add a load image from outputs node. Here we go, let's open a sample image. We'll select any of these images and click open. Now, if we click on this node, we can see there's a new option called add edit model step. Click on it. Here we have a simple grouped node of flux one context. We also need to add another load VAE node, then choose the VAE file that is used with Flux models. So in this group node, we can decide which Flux 1 context model should be used and which T5 model should be used. We can also set the steps, sampler, scheduler, and guidance value. I suggest exploring this node by yourself. And guys, you can add more group nodes and connect them with each other. 
You can also add a save image node and connect it with the group node. And also, you can ungroup this node by right-clicking on it and selecting Convert to Nodes. Anyway guys, this video was lengthy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.